Hey, welcome once again to Rocket Comics. I'm Zach. And I'm Colby. Not Amy. Not this week. Not this week. No. Amy's out this week, um, so I'm glad Colby's here from Gmart Comics here in town. Uh, stopping by to help out. He's in the podcast as well. I do my best work in podcasts. We do. <laughs> We talk an awful lot about stuff in, pod, in the podcast that you can find at rockincomics.com. But we do want to hit some of the highlights, and so let's just get to it. All right, get um, started. First up, Fear Itself 7.3 Iron Man. Once again, I think Marvel's doing a really good job with these seven-point books from Fear Itself, simply because I think it's really easy for these crossover and big events to lose traction when they transition back into normal continuity, and there always seems to be questions that no one answers. So, I think they've done a really good job. With this book, though, for me, um, I'm not following Iron Man continuity, so it loses something for me. But I like the fact that they wrapped up the storyline, and they deal with Greg Argoyle and his actions in, in France, and Odin and Tony Stark seem to be button heads. So, all in all, self-contained, pretty good. Do you need to get it? Probably not. There's a fantastic uh, exchange between... Uh, Iron Man and Odin that I thought sums up everything about the book. I won't ruin it for you here because <laughs> I want you to buy the book and understand it yourself. But yeah, get, give it a, give it a good read. You deserve it. You do, you do deserve it. <laughs> and if you've been reading for itself, uh, just buying them randomly and you haven't picked up the point books, you you probably should. Especially if you're an Iron Man fan, that's definitely worth the trip. So that's what I say. I also liked uh, another Marvel book this week, Avengers number nineteen. Best art ever, Daniel Acuna. <laughs> uh, big fan of his art. I'm sure I've mentioned that before. And uh, we finally get the we see who the new team lineup is for the main Avengers and some surprising additions. But a little deceiving, and, and because they didn't answer the question, they show a character on the on the cover, Black Panther. I don't know if he actually makes a team. I think he well he shows up in the book. So yes. it's okay to put him on the cover. Okay. Even if he may not be part of the essential team. No. But it's good. It is good. I always like to see the new iteration of Avengers, and there is a really good... I mean, it, this is basically the issue. Who's going to be in it? Here you are. <laughs> now everyone's here. But it sets up the next set of books really well at the last page, so pick it up. The Avengers. next 100 issues all hinge <laughs> on this comic. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, next up, another one of my favorite Marvel books is Thunderbolts. This one is number 165. Ta-da. It wraps up the B-team Thunderbolts in the past, hooking up with the invaders of Captain America, Submariner, and the Human Torch. I, it's been a fun last couple issues for me for Thunderbolts, and I was a little sad to see that, that go away, but I like this team. I like team books. I like weird characters in them. And that's what you get with Thunderbolts. You have Satana and Mr. Hyde on the same team and a little bizarre Asgardian troll girl <laughs> with a giant axe. What? It Really, it kind of hits all the bases. It's fantastic. You know, outside of Squirrel Girl, this troll girl in Thunderbolts is Marvel's best character. Cutest as well. Squirrel. Cutest. Squirrel Girl and Troll need to have their own team-up book. Wow. That's, that's my prediction. <laughs> You've heard it here. But moving out of uh, Marvel... Uh, one of my other favorite books this week was Batman number three. Awesome. You learn more about his uh, villain, the Owl. At least that's what I'm calling him. I don't know if that's what he called in the book. But that's what I'm calling him. And you learn about uh, just the insidious nature and the creepiness. It's it's just creepy. It's gonna freak you out. You should buy it. <laughs> You're right. I uh I've liked Batman from issue. I'm I'm just a bad big Batman fan. But this Owl dude is weird and so cool. And we talk in a podcast about how it's a little slow, but man, once it picks up steam, you get going, and that last page, it'll make you want to buy the rest. The next hundred issues. The next hundred issues start right here. <laughs> um, next up, I'm going to go back a week, because it's a book I forgot to pick up last week, and it is The Avenging Spider-Man number one, and I really, 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 really like this book. It's kind of... The Marvel team-up starring Spider-Man, and he's going to be teaming up, I guess, with his other Avenger friends. Yeah. His team-up this week is with uh, the Red Hulk. Just or, or Rulk, as some people seem to want to call him. As Rulk. I don't call him that. Um, this book does have one of the badass moments of the week in it for me, which is when J. Jonah Jameson wants to put real bullets in a starter <laughs> pistol. 
that's just pretty badass. And when all the mole men come storming across the uh, the bridge, that's pretty badass. So, really cool art by Joe Mad. Uh, Zeb Wells Zeb Wells is writing it. It's a fun book. It may not be the most mentally challenging book, but <laughs> it's really fun and it looks good. So pick it up. That's my opinion. Yeah, Joe Mad's art's really good. Everyone loves his art, so pick it up. You ever you've heard of him from Battle Chasers? You know it. And Ultimates Three, but don't worry, he's much better now. Battle Chasers. Battle the Chasers. book he could just never put out on time. Still can't. He had to crack that next level of the game at Xbox 360 he was playing before he did his book that was paying his rent. <laughs> Sorry, Joe Mad. That's how it goes. We're here to call you out. Yes. I also enjoyed Catwoman number three. <laughs> Catwoman. Um, what what's not to love about this issue? Uh, there's torture. There's hostages. There's people dying from bad decision making. There's a kiss with Batman. Who doesn't want to kiss Batman? Uh, well, I mean, if you're Catwoman. And uh, I want to kiss Catwoman. <laughs> well, if you if you were Batman, you could do that. I could. So and that's apparently, what this issue is about. I would have done it every issue so far. <laughs> There's got to be at least one Batwoman, Catwoman, or Batman, Catwoman kiss. A Batwoman, Catwoman kiss would be popular, too. Yes, it let's, would. Let's get it going. It's a bat-on-cat action in this book. Uh, next up, oddly enough, is my random book of the week. It is from IDW. It's called Hawken Number 1, Kachow. And it was completely random. It's weird Western stuff. Weird supernatural western. It's there's a lot of gunfights. There's a lot of killing. There's a lot of dead folks, and there's two animals relieving themselves within the book. That sets the stage for the next five issues <laughs> it, of this series. It's all about the animal defecation. It might. And, I you know. I just I think it's the underlying theme. I just found it odd that they had two full panels dedicated. For the sole purpose of watching a dog relieve himself, and then later a blind donkey relieve himself. That's that's how you know two brothers are writing and drawing this. Wow. These are in-jokes, obviously. But <laughs> beyond all that, it's really a neat Western book. It, it has a supernatural flair. The main character is just this grizzled old dude who's shooting everybody inside. So I found it a fun little romp. So What's not to love about it? I thought it was great, personally. But that brings us to what we both have already agreed on as our Rockin' Comic of the Week. And that is Justice League number three. Two for the price of one. I... The cover says it all for me. You get a lot of Wonder Woman action in this. This is Wonder Woman's issue yeah. of Justice League, definitely. And she's fun, and you have to remember, it's. I know the new 52 is a little hard. This is taking place five years ago. Yes. In the new continuity. Kind of. It, it's so weird. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's five years ago. She's new to, apparently, society. To, to man's world. Yes. So she's learning to adapt. She's still just walking around everywhere with a big sword and kicking a lot of butt. Ready to fight. And we also see uh, one another, another one of my favorite badass moments of the week in this book, where she shows up and Superman takes note and says, You're strong. <laughs> and she goes, I know. <laughs> You don't have to tell her. She knows who she is. That's that's just... I'm sorry. That's pretty <laughs> badass. And then you get to see the uh, appearance of Aquaman for the first time. But, man, all in all, one of the most action-packed books. Definitely. Uh, really well drawn. Sto Love the art. Story's really good. Quite, quite moving. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting. I, I like the story. I like how they good. are kind of slow-rolling this introduction of the team coming together. I, I yeah. think... There have been some new books that, like and I've said before, Justice League International, I think kind of dropped the ball on putting them together. Yeah. This is just hitting it right on the head for me. And we get to see a little more Cyborg, so, man. You can't get enough Cyborg. And next issue, hopefully more Cyborg and Aquaman. Yes. So what What more could you want? Dark Side? Re I, I think he's going to be in here. <laughs> I think he's going to make it. I think he is. <laughs> so definitely Rock and Comic of the Week is Justice League. But um, there are plenty more comics. We talk about a boatload of comics in the podcast. Um, a bunch. All of these. Yes. Just a All bunch. All of them. Look at them. Uh, it's at rockandcomics.com. Check it out. It's uh, so many. It's hard to pick. So these were our highlights for this week. Uh, normally now we'd have an Amy's Awesome, but Amy's not here. Well, that's because Amy's too awesome to be here. She is. She just didn't have that's, time for it. That's what Amy's Awesome of the Week is. She's too awesome to show up. <laughs> <laughs> she just couldn't be here. So, uh, but I did get a chance during the week to um, peruse my uh, my stack, my my archives, and I did pull one out. It's Chase number one. It's back from 1998. 
And one of the main reasons I pulled it was I pulled it out, I, I looked through it again, and I read it, and I was like, I forgot how good that book was. And it's just, it's about uh, Cameron Chase. She's a cop. She's investigating superheroes, superhero incidents. And just, it's well written. It's drawn by uh, John H. Williams III, who is famous for Promethea and Batwoman and is currently drawing Batwoman. Yeah. And oddly enough, Cameron Chase, the main character, is in the current storyline in the new 52 of Batwoman. And we just found out that in December, you can get the entire collected edition of all 10 issues. I think it's 10. I think it is 10. Of Chase coming out in December, which I couldn't be happier for, because I only bought the first three. I never read more than one issue. I'm looking forward to it. So, man. For an archives, I got lucky that it's actually relevant today. So, in December, be looking for it. Seriously, it'll be a good... It's really, really quality stuff. It's called Chase, and it's from 98, and... Ah, fabulous work. Fabulous work. So, there you go. I concur. <laughs> so, there you go. I think, um, I think that wraps it up for this week. We've covered a lot of ground. As always, more in the podcast. So much more. T ton more. So, uh, thanks again for stopping by, man. I'm always happy to do it. <laughs> All right. Till next time, I'm Zach. And I am Colby. Bye.